Gravox on on beans, get them ready to cut in about seven, five to seven days. Um, we finished up with what corn was ready. The rest was above 20% moisture. And to keep from having to send it to the dryer, uh, we're not really in that big of a rush right now. We can wait three or four days, put one combine on beans, one on corn, and get what grain is ready uh, wiped out maybe by the end of next week, hopefully. Um, may take a few more days longer, you never know. I've got some corn right there that uh, there was some high moisture, a little bit higher than we would want if you're not going to dry it. So it, it'll lose two, two to three percent uh, just on fans alone if it's dry, dry, low humidity weather. And um, they cut those beans, their neighbors. But, yep. Yeah, they're for sure ready. You could almost cut them right now. Sure, there's some greener spots, but. Found a bit of debris. Looks like more pieces of vinyl side. Yeah. Probably go right through the combine. I don't know if it was metal or what it was. So I'm gonna pull it out of the field. And while I'm here, show you guys, let's see, kind of why we spray. Here's a green, a green hole. Bear with me. These right here, if that little membrane connects to the hole instead of the, I mean, it connects to the bean instead of the pod. See that? Hard to tell, but basically if you crack open these brown ones, obviously they're gonna thrash. Go right on through the combine, but the ones that are borderline while we're the reason that we're spraying the gramoxone that'll dry them out it'll kill the plant uh or just i think it actually just makes the bean plant become dormant but uh these right here you know for sure they're ready ones like this if you didn't spray that it's an edamame it will stay attached to, there it is. See that, if it's attached, it'll stay attached to the pod. Like so. If that membrane stays around the, if it'll separate all these are very much ready Some good looking beans too very good looking beans four to a pod they're about waist high Caught up with the corn yesterday. We started a uh, ball tillage, uh, running a disc ripper on an 8335. I uh, just dropped Jock off of it. Uh, I 
that's where he got to. You can see that line. Um, running about a 30, 25, 30 degree angle with the cornrows. Uh, not subsoil them very deep, a little over a foot maybe. Uh, there's a difference, a different, different ideas about how deep you should subsoil. We've had pretty, pretty good luck with most of our dirt going between 12 and 14 inches. Um, and we got the, the disc back there chopping up a lot of that corn stubble. Uh, those choppers on this new header, on this 608C, have, uh, we really like the way that looks. So I'm gonna get back to spraying Gamoxone on soybeans. I'm gonna drop the wagon. I'm not, I'm not even going to hook it. I'm just gonna park the truck right here out of my way and let him stop by and get some fuel. But we'll take a look at this dish ripper if he'll come on. Crank uh, my sprayer up, let some air build up real quick. shanks back here I think he said they were running about 14 inches um, you'll be able to tell the dirt will be hitting it about here which some are cutting up so probably however far that is probably more than 14 inches probably 14 16 and I'm sure some spots he's able able to pull a little deeper than others but that's that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight shanks, eight shanks, that's what I thought. 22 foot, six inch, the disc. We like the, the tillage of the disc and what it does to the, especially the corn stalks and cotton stalks. Well, you can get away with running just rippers. We have some three point hitch rippers if we get caught up enough with harvest, uh, we'll go and uh, run just those three-point hitch rippers. Got some seven and nine shank rigid bars and run them on bean ground, but unless you've shredded the stalks, the bush hog, if you will, the uh, there's just too much too much stalk in the way, too much stubble. What can I do for you? You bring a bucket? <laughs> 